is the introduction to organic chemistry series part one of five. In this video we will talk about atoms, atomic structure, and the periodic table. Let's start with the atom. As you know, everything in the world is made out of atoms, and atoms are the smallest whole particle that are made out of smaller subatomic particles. The subatomic particles are as follows. We have protons, represented by P+, plus. we have neutrons, N0, and electrons, represented by an E with a small negative sign. The charge of a proton is plus one, a neutron has no charge, and the electron is minus one. In this video, I will be representing them as follows. A proton is a plus sign with a circle around it, a neutron will just be a capital N, and an electron will be an E with a negative sign, or a small negative in parentheses. Now, the masses of these particles are as follows. A proton is one atomic mass unit, a neutron is one atomic mass unit, and the electron is an 1800th of an atomic mass unit. So for all intents and purposes, an electron is zero atomic mass units when compared to the proton and the neutron. The atomic number, represented by the letter Z, is the number of protons within an atom. And this is essentially the atom's identity. If you change the number of protons in an atom, it is no longer that atom, but now it is a different atom. The next concept is the mass number, represented by the letter A. The mass number is the mass of the atom or element, which is found by adding up the mass of the protons and the neutrons within that atom. Now, unlike the atomic number, which is the same to each type of atom, the mass number can change within the same type of atom. This introduces the new concept, the isotope. An isotope is simply an atom or many atoms of the same element, each having a different mass. Let's look at an example. If I look at carbon with a mass of 12 and compare that to carbon with a mass of 14, we see that the element is the same, but the mass number is different. Now we know that carbon has six protons, so if we subtract six from each one, we get carbon 12, 12 minus six gives me six neutrons, while carbon 14 gives me eight neutrons. Each atom is still a carbon atom, but because their masses are different, they are now isotopes of each other. When we look at the periodic table, you will see that the masses of different elements are written as a decimal. Now, if you sum one atomic mass unit for every proton and one for every neutron, you expect to get a whole number. But because you have different naturally occurring isotopes, when you take the average of all these isotopes, you get decimals as your atomic mass number. So we know what's in an atom. Now let's see what the atom looks like. The center of every atom, which contains all the mass, is called the nucleus. The nucleus contains your protons and your neutrons. Around the nucleus we have what are called shells or orbitals. These shells are where you will find the electrons that are orbiting around your nucleus. The electrons are each confined to their principal energy level or their specific shell. The most important of these is called the valence shell, which is the outermost shell. The reason why it's so important is because the valence shell has the valence electrons. 95% of chemistry has to do with electrons within the valence shell reacting with or attacking other electrons or other molecules. Especially in organic chemistry, all those reactions you're going to see are reactions that happen within your valence electrons. Now that we know about the atom, let's take a look at the periodic table. As you move horizontally along the table, you have what are called your periods. And as you move vertically down the table, you have what are called your groups. Now atoms are within the same groups because they share chemical characteristics. And these chemical characteristics give them the name for that specific group. All the way to the left, we have two groups known as metals. And these can be further split. The left group, or column one, are called the alkali metals. And column two are called the alkali earth metals. This large purple block are known as the transition metals. All the metals, including the alkali, alkali earth, and transition metals, share similar characteristics. They are all shiny, solids, can be flattened in sheets, 
drawn into thin wires, and they're very good conductors of heat and electricity. The only exception to the solid rule is mercury, which is liquid at room temperature. To the right, we have this staircase looking group, which are known as the metalloids or semi-metals, and this is because they share some characteristics of the metal elements and some characteristics of the non-metals. To the right of the metalloids, we have the non-metals. Distinguishable here are the halogens. These are typically referred to as halides in your organic chemistry course. To the right, we have the noble gases. These elements, like nobility, don't like to mix and typically do not partake in chemical reactions. Characteristics of non-metals include gases or brittle solids at room temperature. The only exception here is bromine, which is actually a liquid. Now these solids are brittle and they're poor conductors of both heat and electricity. Now you may recall from your general chemistry course that these elements down here are known as the lanthanides and actinides. However, because they don't play a role in organic chemistry, we don't have to worry about them. Now let's look at some of the trends on the periodic table. Recall from general chemistry that fluorine is the most electronegative atom and francium is the least electronegative atom. So this trend shows that as you move towards the right on the periodic table or as you move upward on the table, electronegativity increases. We can summarize this trend by drawing one big arrow showing that electronegativity increases upwards and towards the right. Another important trend is size. Recall that the atoms at the top right are relatively small and the atoms on the bottom left are relatively large. From here we can see that as you move down the periodic table or as you move left on the periodic table, size increases. Once again, we can generalize this trend by drawing one large arrow showing that size increases down and towards the left on the table. Now that you understand the basics of the periodic table, it's time to memorize it. Just kidding. However, since you will be reusing the same elements, the same small number of elements over and over throughout organic chemistry, it does help to memorize a portion of the periodic table. And here's what you should memorize. To the left we have hydrogen in group number one. In group number four we have carbon. Five we have nitrogen. Below that we have phosphorus. In six we have oxygen and sulfur and your halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. The reason you want to memorize these is you don't want to have to keep referring back to the table to understand the trends. The group numbers above these elements help you memorize how many valence electrons. Something like carbon has four, phosphorus and nitrogen five, oxygen and sulfur six, and halogens have seven. Another trend that this helps you with is size. As you go down the table, size increases, so you know that fluorine is the smallest halogen and iodine is the largest. This will make a lot more sense down the line, but for now it's important to get familiar with where they are on the table and the general overview of this small portion. I hope you enjoyed this video, and be sure to see all five Intro to Orgo videos to ensure that when you start studying organic chemistry, you have a thorough understanding of the chemistry required to be able to ace the material. If you have any questions, I will be happy to help you with them. Simply post your questions in the comments below, or send me an email and I will respond as soon as I can. Email your questions to tutorials at leahforsci.com. You can find additional study information and more tutorials on my website at www.leah spelled L-E-A-H, the number 4, S-C-I, dot com. And you can also find me right here on my YouTube channel, Leia for Sci Tutorials.